What, can I ask, what was the injury to the shoulder? What happened? What happened was I was wakeboarding, um, and probably at the time of looking back on it, I was trying to show off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, there weren't any girls around or anything. Couple, right? couple. Oh, okay. And I did a flip uh, behind the boat. I actually landed the flip, but the rope got wrapped around my arm Ugh. and kind of pulled me. And I just bad, bad accident. That day that he told me I needed to get a job, uh, I was like, all right, I'll think about what kind of job I need to get. So that night, like any college kid does, I went to a bar. And, oh, of course, um, gotta go think about it. That's, called, that's your office. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about it. Yes. And this bar was called Pop Bellies. And um, I saw this guy on stage and I was like, hey dad, <laughs> I think I found a job I wanna oh, do. Oh, great. And so I started learning guitar and then I went to that guy at Pop Bellies like a week later and I was like, hey listen, I saw last week you had that guy on stage. I do that back home all the time. I completely lied. <laughs> I was like, I do that back in that's back, called, back home. That's called shucking and japping. Yeah, yeah. You can jab. And so I was like, I was just telling him what I could do before I really knew I could do you it. You were but selling. It, but I exactly. Yeah. But I was I had to deliver on what I was selling. Right. And so uh, he's like, you want to play? I was like, yeah. He goes, why don't you play tonight? I thought, oh my god. <laughs> and I didn't even have that a guitar. That sounds like Nashville. I didn't even have a oh, guitar yeah? that plugged in. Play me a song right now then. That's right. Yeah, that's how Nashville works, as you know. Yeah. So, so you're going, uh, okay, tonight. Yeah, how do you, how do you, what'd you have to do? Grab a I, Well, I went to the local guitar shop, uh, and uh, this this guy that owned the, owned the guitar shop, his name was Ray Wiley. I said, I need a guitar that plugs in. I got a gig tonight. <laughs> and uh, he sold me a guitar. Yeah. Um, and I still have that guitar to this day. And uh, I went back that night, and I think I played Sweet Home Alabama at least four times. Oh, yeah. I made tips. I made friends. Did you find out if the little pieces of paper were actually phone numbers? They were. They were I phone made numbers. Friends. Okay. I got some phone numbers, and I called Dad that night, and I said, I found a job. You know, uh, going from the little bar, Potbellies, to Nashville, that takes a lot of confidence, especially learning the story, how it's, it's Napster, it's your neighbor's guitar, it's like a secondary thought really to you at that point, but then at some point, something had to click in your head and go, I think I could go to Nashville and do this. What was that transformation like? I got tired of playing Sweet Home Alabama. I got tired of playing cover songs just to make people happy. Like, I've never been validated by, uh, by people telling me that I'm good. Like, I've been validated by, by convincing myself mm -hmm. that I fulfilled something. You know, in Nashville, I can just imagine you coming in, because I know what I felt like. The first time I thought, I'm pretty good at what I do. And then the second you walk into one of these joints around Nashville, and you see who's up on the stage singing, it immediately readjusts your idea of where you land uh, in the pecking order of talent. Like, I mean, the monsters that are outside these windows, some of them are parking cars for a living, they're bartending. What was it like in Nashville when you ran into the level of ability in this town? I mean, I could go back 15 years and try to tell you what I felt like then, but I could tell you what I feel like right now. Sure. I think that's the most honest answer is like yeah. right now in my career, I'm 39 years old. I've had some hits on the radio, um, but every day I'm absolutely humbled by these people I hear that don't have record deals, that are sitting down on Broadway, they're playing guitar, or singing, you know, Sweet Home Alabama mm -hmm. to, to some tourist that walks in there and you're like, why is that guy mm. not doing what I'm doing over here? Because he's better than I am. Right. And I'm okay to say that. They're like, everywhere. I genuinely mean oh, that. Oh, that's like, a fact. I, I feel the same so thing. lucky to do what I do. There's been so many times where I've felt this negative side of maybe this won't happen, maybe this isn't gonna work out, but I have to just like shake it off. There's a lot of talented people who are the ones that make it? Who are the ones that don't make it? You and I both know it's not based on who is the best singer. So what's the difference? It's that. It's that they can handle the word no. They can handle putting something out and it not doing it. Whatever negative answers they get and just letting them bounce off, bounce off and going, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to get a yes one of these days. And when I do, that's when I'm knocking it off. You've got to be able to, to shut that off. But Jake, a lot of people don't handle those answers very well. They don't like the word no. So the, the benefit of having a dad like you had that, I mean, his, his doctrine, the way he thinks and the way he talks is DNA baseline American. That's it. The country was founded on that kind of thinking. So you're really the, the beneficiary of his type of thinking. And that is what's taken you from there to where you are today. Well, I, that's cool to hear you say that. But I think the best way I can sum up how I've tried to live my life 
is that I'm not a reactive person. I'm a proactive person.